She is a staunch advocate for the military and veterans issues, and she's a strong advocate and voice for this memorial. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Governor Janine Hampton. Thank you and good morning. It is truly an honor to be here on this particular day, 28 years after Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. You know, there are many reasons why those of us who serve join the military. Some join for educational reasons, some join for a job, some join for it's just as simple as uh, wanting to serve our nation. But I think many of us want to be something, we want to be part of something that is bigger than ourselves. And, and many of those, many of us achieve that. But regardless of the reason that we join, we all know, all of those in the service know that at some point, the time may come where we will be asked to risk our lives or ordered to risk our lives for a bigger mission. And so in 1989, I was thrilled to learn that I was going to be assigned to the 552nd Airborne Warning and Control Wing. And furthermore, as a, as a software person, I was going to be on flying status. Those of you in the Air Force know that a tiny percentage of the Air Force serve in flight in any capacity. And so as a software person, I was going to be on flying status. And I loved it. And shortly after I got there, less than a year after I'd been there, suddenly my unit was preparing for war. Now it's ironic because AWACS had just pulled out earlier that year out of Saudi Arabia. It was, there was an ongoing mission. They were there for years and they had just finally pulled out permanently and now in August of 1990 they were back. And so I found myself deployed for what was supposed to be eight weeks. Except eight weeks was extended to 12 was extended to 16, then 20, and then it was just infinity. They said nobody goes home. And I was actually pretty thrilled with that too. I didn't tell my the guy I was dating at the time who was not pleased um, that I was actually glad I was going to be, I was going to remain in theater for the big show. And although we were well behind enemy lines in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, there were reminders, constant reminders that we were indeed in a war. Um, it started stateside when I was when I had to do for the first time in my life a last will and testament in theater. The gas masks were my constant companion. Uh, there was mystery meat that to this day I still don't know what that was that I ate over in Saudi Arabia. And then there were Scud missiles. Even even though we thought we were well behind enemy lines. Uh, Saddam often lobbed in Scud missiles into Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I also learned that uh, sleep is highly overrated. <clears throat> but we were part of an extraordinary coalition of nations. And that's why this particular, and, and we, were, we were blessed with leaders who wanted to get the job done, and which is why it was so short. So I returned home afterwards got out of the military in 1992, but in 1991, I, I, I came to D.C. here, Washington, D.C., and there was an extraordinary victory parade. Such an outpouring of patriotism and the love and appreciation for the military, I have not seen since, and it was, it was amazing. I've also had the privilege of returning to Washington, D.C. as part of an honor flight, or uh, two or three honor flights, to escort vets to see their particular memorial. And in time, this memorial will be part of that trek. There will be those who are a lot older, a lot more gray hair, maybe need a wheelchair, and they will be making the, the trek here to DC, to this particular site as part of an honor flight to see the Desert Storm Memorial and remember the conflict that they served in. And so it is my honor to be here this morning to help dedicate this site. And I pray God's blessings on the folks who will build it, the designer, the, the, the committee who is raising money, and to all those who are honored and everyone who visits this reverent site. God bless you all. God bless the United States of America. Thank you.